Hey everybody, how are you? Tony Mila here with Wolf Dog Behavior and Management, a Facebook group. I'm the admin um, and canine behaviorist. So I haven't posted any training videos in a while. Um, I've gotten a couple of consultations of late, but it seems that a lot of people are really, uh, well, really contacted me anyway for any behavioral uh, advice. But um, I do have a webinar that's available under announcements. If you look under announcements, you'll see a webinar called Canine Communication and Understanding. Um, and if you want a little bit of a better uh, education on what I'm doing right now, um, you'll want to watch that webinar, Canine, Behavior, uh, Canine Communication and Understanding. And I will be doing a follow-up webinar uh, sometime soon, just with all the COVID stuff and having a busy business, um, working with dogs and canine behavioral issues. Uh, I don't really get to... Uh, really put as much training videos as I like to on our group. But one thing that I'd like to do is show you guys a little bit of a video on how to start working on your wolf dog's intensity and anxiety. Um, I will be showing videos of me working with several types of percentages, um, low content, uh, upper mids, and even high content. Um, so I will be showing you the same exercise that today, but I will be showing it with a higher content. Um, most likely upper, you know, higher upper content. We're looking probably about 80 or 90. Um, but in any case, I'm going to first show you a technique that I use with lower content. And it's a simple technique. It's utilizing the calming exercise that I taught in that webinar, Canine Communication and Understanding. Um, and it's also utilizing the body postures that I taught on what to look for uh, to promote a calmer wolf dog. In this case, we're going to be using a toto. A toto is um, 25%. Uh, gray wolf. Um, majority of them, actually, the, he looks German Shepherd, but the majority of them is actually uh, Siberian Husky and Malamute, and I think he's got maybe 12% GSD. You think so, Hatoto? In any case, he's excited. He's got a leash on. Um, we're actually going to take him over to our a bigger kind of a fenced enclosure to play with the other dogs. So he has an association of that already, which is already causing a little uh, excitability. If you see his tail wag, he's anticipating, he's fixating on where we're going to be going. So first thing I want to do, and this is stuff that um, we'll be talking about in the so, video. So first thing I want to do is we're going to go ahead and open up this door. And you can see the anticipation already kicking in. So I basically want to use what's called auditory and psychological pressure. It's communicative. Hey, that creates eye contact. Shh. There, so he knows that he's not allowed to walk in front of me. That play bow, if you guys have a wolf dog, that does not mean that he's gonna be subordinate. That play bow is he's already gonna to wanna to be playing a game with me. Right, he already knows that I'm, I'm asking for some self-restraint on his part, hey. So it's gonna get playful. A lot of times when you're working with uh, wolf dogs, um, they're not in a state, uh, they're not in the right state of mind to be learning. So we can't really teach anything until we get the mind calm. So I am now gonna see if I can get a wider angle on here. Whoop, cool, and now you guys can really see the facilities. So standing is the intent to move. That's something that we cover in the webinar. Standing is the intent to move. I don't want to tell him to sit. I don't want him to tell him to down because those also are communicated body postures that mean something. You can learn more about that in the webinar. That's acceptance, not calm just accepting the fact that he's going to have to wait here for a while, but he's still in a state of anticipation, all right? What I'd like him to do is I'd like those hips to roll and I'd like the head to go down and I'd like to see a calmer state of mind. If I proceed with my walk now, for some people saying, oh, he's doing good, you can go for a walk now. This is not good. So most dog trainers will teach wait at the door incorrectly. And most dog trainers will probably give you some false information as to what it means to wait at the door. It means you're the boss, or it means that you know, you're in control of freedom. Really, you know, we're not, the dog's not waiting on us. We're really waiting on the dog to be in the right state of mind, to change his perception, his association of what it means to step out of this threshold, that it doesn't associate intensity, excitability, and we're about to play games. It means that we're always supposed to be calm. Hips are square again. He's in transition, so he's not quite calm. And for those of you that want to know what calm looks like, I would really probably uh, um, suggest that you go under announcements on our Facebook page and click on the webinar called Canine Communication and Understanding. 
Hips are square again. That's not calm. He's still in acceptance, and we're getting some displacement here um, because he is waiting. So is he waiting very well? No. You know, what is waiting? Waiting is waiting for direction. I don't want him waiting for direction. I just want him to be chill. We can be here for an hour. Hey, um, this could take a long time. We could be here for 45 minutes before he fully goes calm. And we may skip this adventure today. But I need to really change his perception of how he feels about the state of mind he's in at this threshold. And right now, he is still anticipating. He could be anticipating waiting for a release. He could be anticipating me stepping aside and letting a pathway for him to go out. Um, he could be just anxious, right? Um, I don't want this kind of a state of mind in my wolf dog. And if I don't fix this now, it will only get worse and worse with every daily task and habit and lifestyle I have because I never take the time to show him patience and how to calm his mind down. This is not a balanced wolf dog right now. He may look balanced to some of you, but on my professional opinion, he's not balanced. Why? Because he's in a state of anxiety. He may not be severe as some of the wolf dogs you guys have, but this is how it starts. He's anticipating. I don't want him anticipating or waiting for a command. And that's one of the things that you don't want to do, hey, with your wolf dogs, is start teaching hyper-focus and obsessiveness over direction. Going, sit, leave it, watch me, drop it, roll over, take it. You know, if you, if, when you start drilling your dog that way, it puts your dog in a state of anticipation of when the next command is going to happen. And it will create a very hyper-focused, obsessive dog. And for some trainers, that's what they want. It looks super impressive, but it looks very militant or very robotic because the dog is on a reactive side of his brain, always reacting to stimulation, including your commands. And your dog will perceive, he'll perceive his relationship with you as a state of excitability. You'll be a source of excitement to your dog and possibly a source of frustration to your dog that every time he sees you and you talk and he keeps anticipating you might give a command or he's not sure what your words mean, he could jump on you. He can nuzzle, you know, muzzle you. He could get excited and start growling. He could bark at you. And to you, you're thinking, wow, he's, you know, he gets excited whenever I make this noise or he gets excited whenever I say this word and it doesn't really mean anything. I wonder why it causes him to go crazy. It causes him to go crazy because of his perception of what you represent whenever you work with him. Hey. Okay. So I kind of created some space there. So we're in a state of anticipation. I don't know how long this will take, but what I will do is I will wait as long as it takes. You want to always take the time to work with your dogs as long as it takes. Got a hip roll there, which is good. So he's, he's, he's in transition. Standing is the intent to move. Sitting is an anticipation of direction or movement or waiting for the environment to change to do your next move. Laying down in an Egyptian sphinx position would be um, acceptance. Hips rolled, head down is the dog's developed a coping mechanism and is now as calm and relaxed. If I continue to keep giving him directions and teach him to anticipate everything that comes out of my mouth instead of leading him like I should, um, he'll be always in a state of anticipation and he'll never be a dog that's actually balanced living in the moment and having gratitude for the position he's in currently. And that is very similar with humans as well. If humans are always worried about what's to come next, what is my boss going to say next? What direction are they going to give me any minute now? Um, when is that light bill due? When do I have to pay rent? Oh, I forgot to meet my friend. When is that supposed to happen? I should call him. Maybe I should check my schedule. You're never living in the moment. You're always in a constant state of anticipation of what's to happen next. And that creates anxiety. And so with Hitoto here, I do not want to create anticipation of anything. As a matter of fact, maybe I might want to do this several times and not go for a walk. Really? Because the truth is, is this threshold is an emotional addiction of what he perceives is about to happen. It's like being excited in line at a roller coaster ride or being excited that we're about to do some treat training or being or, or we're about to play some games. If I keep living with him and teaching him that he can anticipate or to always be hyper focused to anticipate whenever I'm going to say anything that comes out of my mouth, I'll never have a calm, relaxed dog that just simply follows me. All right, so we're getting some calm, relaxed eyes here. Um, 
He's got a he's got a good pant going, which is great. All right, so so I'm gonna pause this, and when I get the potty position I want, then I'll take him through. But this is just a little bit of how to properly teach your dog to wait. And when you do this, I'm using this threshold of going for a walk or going to go play with these other dogs in a second as an example. But I do this during feeding as well. My dogs are in a calm state of mind while I'm making my food. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't uh, have them wait underfoot. I don't have them waiting in the kitchen with me. Um, they're in their places, they're relaxed, and they don't even get fed. I'll make the food and I'll even leave it in the kitchen. And they know that the food has been made. And I'll sit down and watch TV while they're all relaxed watching TV. And until I see that state of mind go calm, and that could be 30 minutes from when I made the food, then I'll go ahead and start feeding them. But I'm never in a rush to do anything. And I never make anything um, unnecessarily intense or excited. So now we're getting a really calm state right here. This is when you're supposed to walk your dog. This is when you're supposed to feed your dog. This is when you're supposed to allow people to pet your dog, right? This is what you want to reinforce. You don't want to, you don't want to say wait, have a state of anticipation of release, and then reinforce his state of mind by moving forward with whatever you know, he anticipates you guys are going to be doing. He's getting a little bit more relaxed there. So we've got good calming behavior here. He's starting to relax a bit more. And when he gets, and, and he's not quite to my satisfactory as calm as I'd like him to be, right? This is also the state of mind I wait for before I train anything. So whenever I go to clients' houses and they have wolf dogs and they want to introduce me to have them work with a wolf dog, sometimes I'll plan a week of being in their city and I'll get a hotel because I can't actually even work with their wolf dog for the first couple of days. It doesn't quite happen that way. We got to go square hips again here. Because the dog has to be in the right state of mind to learn. And earlier, if I would have decided I was going to do a training session, he wouldn't have been in the right state of mind. He would have been a reactive dog, for sure. I mean, he would react to anything I do or throw in his face or get him to do any tricks I want him to do. But I don't want a reactive dog. I want a thinking dog. A dog that's, that learns through observation. It's calmer. And the... Key point in this is taking the time to work with your dog. If you take the time to do things properly, you'll have a calm, relaxed, wolf-type dog in no time. But if you don't take the time um, to actually do this, you'll be working with an intense wolf dog for the rest of your life. And by me, and if you want to know what I mean by taking the time, I may be doing this for an hour and not even go for a walk. Right? I don't want to reward the hyperfocus. Dropping the leash just to add a little bit more intensity, but he didn't really care. But if I had dropped that leash earlier, he would have been out the door. But he's thinking now. He's a little bit more relaxed. Okay, I'm going to pause this for just a second, but I'll start off where I left off when I get the, common, the state of mind that I want. That's the state of mind that I want. Right there. Now what I don't want to do is mess this up by yelling break or okay. Because if I do that, I, I just undone everything that I tried creating an association of how we're about to go out and enjoy the world. I really just simply want to just get the leash. You see how much more respectful he is and lead him out. Like that. Okay. And then we'll go for our walk. Which actually, we're going to go actually play with some dogs here. All right. And I do this for everything. For eating, for playing. He wants to pee. For eating, for playing, everything. And we're about to go over to an enclosure over here. And if you watch him, he looks like he's anticipating to go to the enclosure. Correct? Auditory pressure. Hey. Hey. Now he's realizing that he's going to be told to wait. Okay, I'm just demanding some space. He's going to try to walk around me here. Come here. 
I'm not using the word stay. I'm not using the word sit. I'm not using the word down. If you guys want more information as to why I'm not using commands, again, I would go under announcements on our Facebook group and watch the webinar, Canine Communication and Understanding. Hey. Uh, let's see, we're getting some intensity here. There we go. Okay, sitting. That's the, that's the second phase. Sitting is just another anticipation. He's waiting for either me to move out of the way. He's waiting for me to open up a space for him to go right past me. Um, he is fixating though, so I don't want him to fixate. So if he fixates again, I'll show you what I do to kind of break that fixation. He's back to the fixation. Break the fixation again. I don't need to teach watch me or anything like that. I just need a pattern interrupt to break that pattern. If I don't work on this, it doesn't matter how much training I do, whether it be clicker training or whether it be traditional or whatever style you guys tend to gravitate to, um, he's not really in a state of learning. If I use treats, it will only promote that this whole exercise means excitability and playfulness. And if I correct them, it will only overly stress them or cause more anxiety. It really is about patience and understanding. And so I do this every time I see that my, my wolf dog is going to get a little over intense. And this would constitute as mental stimulation. This is not easy for them. And so it is, it is, it is mentally uh, challenging and it will mentally drain them. And you'll have a mentally relaxed uh, wolf dog. Again, this is a low content, so... We are, we are dealing with a lot of dog here, um, but I will be honest with you. I actually have an easier time with this kind of communication with upper mids and high contents, believe it or not. Um, I find uh, <laughs> the lower contents are, to me, more difficult to deal with. Their characteristics are definitely different, so I'm not saying they're the same. Um, just like an English bulldog is the same species as a whippet, but their characteristics are completely different. So I'm not saying that, oh, by far, it's way easier to train a higher content. I'm just saying that the characteristics of a higher content is different than the characteristics of a low content. But the style of how I train is exactly the same. The reason why it's the same is just because of the species. They're canids. And all canids actually process and work through things the same way. Yeah. So, I mean, this is the first time I'm really kind of asking him to show me some patience. We're going to get him some acceptance here in a second. Um, and this will always be the longest, the first time you do it, the first two or three times you do it. But afterwards, they go calm or they're always calm or they go calm in like two minutes whenever you ask them to relax or chill out. It doesn't take very long. Um, but if you don't take the time to do this to start off with, you'll be working on trying to control their anxiety and intensity for the rest of your life. You have to literally say, I'm canceling the rest of my day out. And today I'm dedicating a full day to just teaching him how to deal with every single emotional trigger that triggers him throughout my daily activities of what I do on an everyday basis. There's my acceptance. Hey. I'm going to kind of, so what I'm going to do is since his anticipation is that direction, I'm going to position my body next to him because whenever I get his attention, like what I just did, I need his attention to come to me and not in the same direction, looking behind me at the enclosure that he's going to go to. Hey. Okay, so you see those hips are square? Okay, I'm gonna wait this, um, and this may be a while, but I will, I will again, I'm gonna pause this, and when I have the right state of mind, then I'll continue to the, to the enclosure. Um, but again, I'm giving you an example. Just so you know, <laughs> this, is, this is not for somebody that's impatient, and this is not a technique for somebody that wants quick results. But this is how you classically can, uh, can train a dog 
latently through latent learning and not use any operant conditioning whatsoever. We're not doing any operant conditioning. All we're doing is creating an association. And associations stick. And a lot of behavioral issues that people have were not created through operant conditioning. Nobody, you know, nobody, uh, you know, clicker trained your dog to be disobedient. He has emotional uh, associations to his environment. And when you're dealing with behaviorism, what you're really doing is, is studying how a living species reacts to the changes of their environment. That's exactly what behaviors do in Yellowstone. And they try to change the environment to benefit the species or to um, influence uh, the species uh, behaviorally, uh, which is the reason why um, law enforcement and um, National Forest Service representatives try to educate the public on learn teaching them how to haze coyotes that come into their neighborhood. We're getting a little anxiety here because he doesn't want to wait any longer. But it's too bad. All right, I'm going to pause this and I'll continue when I see the state of mind that I'm looking for. Hey. Okay. Stay tuned. As you can see, he's no longer really fixated on that fence. His eyes are relaxed. He's much calmer. There we go. Nice, good yawn there. Hips are rolled. Ready to move forward to go play with his friends. I'm not going to praise him up. Or if I do praise him, this is probably good to show. Watch how I praise. Watch his tail. See how it just stopped? Because I squeezed his head first. And look, this is called praise and affection. Not praise and excitement. If I do praise and excitement, you did a good job. It's automatically going to ruin everything I worked on. I need to get that tail to stop. Praise and affection. You'll get a much sweeter wolf dog if you make it a habit to give praise and affection and stop using so much emotional anxiety and intensity to create that in your dog. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Uh, hopefully, I'll have time to make more. If you guys would like, you guys can uh, email me with some suggestions um, of something you'd like to see. Or you can also contact me if you have a wolf dog that you need work with. I do free consultations for members only. Um, and uh, hopefully, we'll see you there. And I'll try to get another video up, or actually another webinar up. I really want to do a webinar on... Um, the four protocols I use to controlling an intense wolf dog uh, whenever I'm working on behavior modification. And I kind of want to just teach you guys my whole system. Um, uh, there's several different types of training methods. Uh, just to name a few, we got Tellington teach Etch, we got traditional training, we got positive reinforcement, we got scientific-based training, we got clicker training. This training is uh, something that uh, not a lot of people do anymore. It's not dog whispering, and I don't like calling it dog whispering because it's nothing like the dog whisperer show, but it is more holistic and it's natural. And so uh, for lack of a better example, I like to call it more natural, holistic canine behavior. Um, don't use treats. Don't use training tools. Um, it's just a lot of patience and understanding. All right. Signing off and you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Be safe and healthy out there, everybody. Bye.